In fact, in an early version of the script, one of the burglars was supposed to clean out the silverware department of the store. But Chaplin realized this suddenly made him out to be a common thief, when in fact he was just a hungry man trying to survive. The scene was shot, but cut in the final editing. Early in 1931, after the premiere of City Lights, Chaplin set off on a world tour, which was to keep him away for more than a year. In London, Paris, and Berlin, wherever he went, adoring crowds mobbed him. At the time, he was the most famous man in the world. Even if he was received by those we tend to call people in high places, Chaplin had seen depression, unemployment, and despair. He'd begun to ask questions and come up with his own theories about a better redistribution of wealth. He had discussed these theories with such eminent personalities as his friend H.G. Wells, Albert Einstein, and the Mahatma Gandhi, whom he met here in London. During his meeting with Gandhi, Chaplin expounded the idea that machines, when used properly, could be a boon to mankind. But employed solely for profit, they brought only misery. Discouragement, fear, failure. Depression haunted America. When he got home, Chaplin realized that something had changed in America in his absence and that the enthusiastic spirit of the pioneers was gone, as he would write later. After the prosperity of the 20s and in the wake of the Wall Street crash of 29, the depression had set in for the long term. Unemployment had become endemic, hunger was a daily reality, the number of homeless kept rising, and the troops could readily be brought in to suppress all explosive manifestations of social unrest. It's interesting to see these newsreels alongside scenes from the film. It's also certainly one of the great documentaries on the period. And on the shanty towns. On the entire period. All the people who lived in them. Even as he remained himself, his character. It's the same thing. This shack. He only shows one. But that's the power of fiction. He manages to convey the same violence as real life. That's where the real violence is in the way people are housed, or rather in the way they aren't housed, in the food they're forced to eat. The Model T was more than an automobile. It was the symbol of an industrial revolution. Assembly line production enabled manufacturers to cut costs on all kinds of products and make them affordable to all. Minute by minute, production combated the waste of time and effort. The pieces reached the workers on conveyor belts. They were no longer left waiting uselessly. This was a great leap forward, because they could regulate the production rate and maintain it at a constant speed. The battle against wasted effort was being won. Unbridled mechanization has developed in previous years to rationalize labor at the risk of dehumanizing it. The assembly lines of the Ford auto plants were the most famous examples of this. The trouble was that with the country deep in the depression, no one could afford anything now, so there was no need to keep the factories going. Hence, there was no hiring. The assembly line allowed the price of the Model T to be brought down from $850 to $300. In 1933, Chaplin published a series of articles in which he explained his view of the world relating his travels and explaining his ideas about the economy. And, recalling a conversation he'd had with a journalist about the automobile assembly lines in Detroit, he began to work on what would become the scenario for modern times. <laughs> 